I command you to let loose the last of the Titans. Let loose the Kraken! Hi there, and welcome to Baseball by Design. I am SportsLogos.net minor league baseball correspondent Paul Caputo, broadcasting live, as always, from the Sunday Helmet Hall of Fame in my basement in Fort Collins, Colorado. This week on the Baseball by Design podcast, we're going to be talking about the Ottawa Titans who play in Ottawa, Ontario. They are members of the Independent Professional Frontier League. Later on in this episode, you'll be hearing from the artist who created their logo, Alexander Fish. And of course, as always, Dan Simon of Studio Simon will be here with one of his Studio Simon stumpers. Right now, I'm so pleased to welcome to the podcast Davide DeCipio, who is the radio broadcaster for the Ottawa Titans. Davide, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Paul. Thank you for having me. Oh, man, I am so psyched to talk about the Ottawa Titans. I'm going to jump right in. Ottawa is the capital of Canada. I'll let you tell this story, but the team's been around either since 2020 or 2022, depending on how you want to look at it. You've been there since the beginning. Why is a team in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada called the Ottawa Titans? Yeah, uh, let's go right into it with uh, our long history of of baseball uh, dating back to the 1800s, and then it went doormat for uh, 50 odd years, and then all of a sudden the uh, the auto uh, the Philadelphia Athletics and the uh, the New York Giants decided to put their affiliates up here in Ottawa, and they took the the par- the name of the parent club in the in the early 1950s, and uh, then uh, those teams lasted for a combined, if I'm not mistaken, three seasons, and then all of a sudden, 39 years later, here come the Ottawa Lynx, and obviously that's what caught uh, minor league baseball and the international league by storm. Uh, and then we, we've been really, uh, unfortunately a revolving door since then, uh, since 2007. So, uh, the Ottawa Rapids were around for, for the one season. Uh, I don't know if many know this, but the Ottawa Voyagers were a rebranded franchise for 2009 that never got off the ground. Mm. Uh, and then, we, and then we had the Ottawa fat cats and then the Ottawa champions. And then now here we are with the Ottawa Titans. So of course the Titans with no affiliation to, uh, than any of the previous independent baseball teams here in Ottawa. Uh, it's its own entity, but uh, uh, the only common theme is that we all shared uh, have shared the same ballpark. So, yeah, the Ottawa Titans, um, I mean, it just represents the the history of, of our city, the the strength of our city, and uh, whatever uh, they try to knock us down for, we, we remain strong. So uh, kind of got that uh, the built-in mentality that we have here uh, in, in Ottawa, and uh, especially uh, the Ottawa and Gatineau surrounding regions. So – Given that there is that history of baseball in Ottawa as the team's radio broadcaster, as the voice of the team, how do you feel this team has landed in Ottawa? What do you see as the prospects for for longevity? Yeah, I think we have everything uh, really going for us now. We, we didn't get off. Well, we got, we got off to a really uh, difficult start. I mean, starting this franchise uh, in COVID and uh, having to repair some of the 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 bridges that uh, may have been uh, left doormatted or, or burned from, from previous iterations of, of baseball in our city. And uh, I think we have uh, the first thing that, that we got going for us is we have probably the most stable owners, if not one of the best ownership groups in all of independent baseball uh, with the Cates family. And uh, one of the most recognizable ownership groups in our city uh, with the, with the red blacks and the 67s and in OSEG. Uh, so we got that going for us right off the bat. Uh, we have a young staff, uh, me, myself included. Uh, I've won a couple of years of professional baseball prior to joining with this team. So, I mean, we got that. So we're, we're all green. We're all learning on the fly and we're, we're trying to make this uh, the most uh, family friendly environment in all the city and most affordable ticket uh, for a family uh, affordable outing here uh, in Ottawa. So I think with, with all those uh, kind of recipes uh, planning together, I think we have, we have the, uh, the ability to, to do one of the best things, not only in, in the city, but in the entire frontier league as a whole. So playing in the capital of Canada, obviously that's part of this identity, right? Like you you right. have the the red color. Uh, I'm going to talk to Alexander Fish in the next segment of this episode. Uh, he created the brand. I'm curious how much that factors into the, the branding and just sort of the whole identity of the team. The fact that you are playing not just in the city of Ottawa, but in the city that is the capital of Canada. Yeah, that, that's a that's another uh, really special thing, right? Is uh, is being able to play in the capital. Uh, for me, uh, myself, I get to work in my hometown. Uh, I've been I've I've been born and raised here, and yeah, um, red, white, and black. Uh, I know uh, is synonymous with with Ottawa sports, uh, whether that be uh, the Senators or even the Red Blacks. Uh, 
from there on, on a professional standpoint, the 67 is probably, uh, I will go down, I'll die on this hill saying that it's the best uniform in all of junior hockey. And then you got us, of course, uh, that, that really wanted to resemble that and uh, pay it back to our city. And I think that was one of the first things I actually mentioned to our ownership group was I hope that our, our color scheme goes back to red, white, and black, what it was uh, in the later years of the Lynx. And then I think the, with the early years, with the, with the first iteration of the second iteration, part of me of the Rapids, uh, but yeah, I mean, getting back to that and really uh, incorporating the city as a whole. Yeah. And, it, and it's all about being local. So Alex, uh, I think uh, probably at around the same time as me, he reached out to our ownership group and said we wanted to be involved in some capacity. And um, Alex has done a tremendous job with us. And I don't know if you can see right above my shoulder here, there's a nice little painting or drawing uh, done by Alex of uh, a recreation of one of our games from uh, the 2023 season that we provided as a gift for our sponsors and, and our staff and, and whatnot. So uh, yeah, it's all about incorporating local with us and uh, what what better way to, to do it. And it all comes together with our with our branding and and, uh, and logo. Also on the wall behind you, there was that uh, beautiful jersey with the, the red red sleeves and the red pinstripes and titans across the chest. It's a you know, it's a really sharp looking brand. One of the decisions that you all made as a franchise is that you went with a designer who was not one of the big firms, right? It was, you know, Alexander Fish is not someone who has done a lot of minor league baseball work. He's an artist and an illustrator, uh, but, you know, someone local who is not one of the the big brands. And you see a lot of teams in independent ball, you know, going with the, with the bigger firms for their identities. What was the thinking uh, from the team's perspective to go with, uh, you know, a, a local illustrator rather than one of the big firms? Yeah, um, I won't speak for for ownerships uh, of why, why they chose to go that way, but I think for me personally, of of seeing how it all came together was, and being able to see it come together from uh, from its infancy was we wanted to be different. Uh, we want to be different from not only uh, of how uh, what the city has been used to, uh, what the city is used to as a whole uh, in terms of sports uh, in our market, um, and the, just the, every little detail that we were trying to to distance ourselves from and be different we're we're a family uh kind of atmosphere here we're affordable um so i mean and, and we're local so wh- whether that is uh the logo itself designer being being alex or uh our concessions uh all of our concession partners are uh, have a local entity to themselves as well everything that we we try to do here uh with the titans is, is all about being local so uh being able to incorporate that as our our illustrator it, it just it was a home run I have to say, for the listener at home, Davide, what a professional! I have a foster cat who made her way into the uh, into the room just now, and I had to mute my microphone. And I'm wrestling with the cat to get her as she's trying to like step on my keyboard and and you know rub against the microphone and everything. And you just <laughs> talked right through it. You didn't even blink. You just you just went with it. So it was uh, what a professional. What. <laughs> Yeah, the every every now and again, when being on the call, you, you have uh, some visitors that, that, that <laughs> pop into the booth, and uh, sometimes uh, I'm used to, to being by myself too. So uh, every every game, almost so um, nothing nothing really phased me. I just one day I hope that a foul ball makes its way up to to my booth, and I make the catch on the fly. That's my that's my dream call. That sounds pretty amazing, actually. That's you know to to be making the call and actually to call your yourself getting uh, you know the foul ball like that. How many fans would you be wrestling with? What's a what's a rough uh, average fan turnout for a uh, a game? Uh, well, fortunately, uh, playing in our facility here in Ottawa, uh, I'm distant from the fans, so I don't think I have very much competition. But I do actually. I I will say. My competition is only having one window with the ability to open in my booth at home. So uh, every every ballpark is different. Obviously, uh, a lot of the smaller ones uh, in the league, there's a lot more competition. Uh, but here, I think uh, the only one is the is the window. Really, it's a narrow <laughs> window, as it were, for uh, yes. you know, for for you to have a ball get through there. Been close. Is that right? Okay. Now, do you yeah. wear a glove or no? Uh, every now and again, I have my glove up in the booth with me and usually it's a, it's a way to fidget or if, if we're, if I put it on and we're, uh, stringing a couple of hits together, I'm a superstitious guy. So if, uh, if, if it's on and I'm fidgeting with it, like I'm an infielder ready to field the ground ball or something like that, uh, I'm always ready. So I'm very, uh, superstitious base. So if it, uh, if it's, if it's on and we're, and we're playing well, it stays on. If we, uh, leave two in scoring position and strike out uh, three consecutive times, it, it's coming off and, and it's not going back on for the rest of the game. I can absolutely appreciate that a hundred percent. 
One of the things that I feel like you see in minor league baseball these days is a team will have either a suite of logos all based on the same identity, but there are like, you know, nine different ancillary logos. And then, of course, there's alternate identities, right? Like there's, you know, all these you know teams who will have four or five identities where they play, you know, on different weekends as different teams. The Titans seem to really focus heavily on on this identity, the Titans identity. What's the what's the philosophy there on just really having the primary, having the cap, having the text logo and that's it? Yeah, we uh, obviously being new, we're trying to establish it in the marketplace. So being an infant uh, franchise, we're going into season four or year five, whichever way you want to look at it. Uh, so we're, we're still really new in our market. Um, so and even even as of late uh, in, in Ottawa, we've had a lot of new teams pop up, whether it be the professional women's hockey team or or women's soccer team or, or the soccer team, basketball, whatever you have it. So uh, really at the same time as, uh, as us that we enter, we had all these other teams that are coming in as well. So really trying to stand out, keeping things uh, kind of uniform, uh, having that kind of corporate look to it, but, but being fun at the same time. And that's, that's what it's about. That's what, that's what Cappy's all about. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Cappy. Uh, and I'm surprised it took me this long to, to mention <laughs> Cappy, but uh, yeah, I mean, sticking to, sticking to really our, um, let's say, Two mainly, uh, the one obviously our primary with with Cappy above the skyline, uh, and then our secondary one of the of our Cap and uh, logo of the the OT intertwined, uh, kind of uh, your 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 typical baseball uh, uh, branding with with that Cap logo. But uh, we've tried to establish uh, pluck p- bits and pieces and and have like uh, obviously what you see on my Cap right now with with just the Cappy face um, as more of a, to attract our younger demographic, obviously. Uh, with Cappy and having a, a lock with Ottawa Titans in our in our font and uh, in diagonal text, so uh, we're we're trying new ways to 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 pull bits and pieces from our from our primary logo, and obviously we've stumbled on a couple that we really like right now. Uh, another one that uh, you did mention of what minor league teams like to to embrace on, and uh, our players actually in uh, in our first season in 2022, uh, kind of like I, I I put it this way. Uh, kind of like the Vegas Golden Knights of 2017 when they were golden misfits and they're like not really all castaways or whatnot, but uh, trying to find their identity with with the, with the team. And uh, that's what really I try to compare our 2022 team uh, with. We were one one win away from the finals uh, against a team that, that's won three consecutive years now. Uh, so we we really had that, that swagger to us that uh, we were one of the best teams, if not the best team in the league. So our, our players try to incorporate uh, the region here of being a Francophone uh, city with our uh, split by the river, and they they um, they branded themselves as Les Titans. So we took that as an inspiration and did a theme jersey in 2023 uh, with the colors of the Franco Ontario flag, uh, and it said Les Titans across the front. So that was probably one of our more cooler ones that we did a couple of years ago. And uh, yeah, we we try to uh, perk the the interest of the fans and and uh, try to get our brand out there as much as possible. So uh, all that those different ways we've we've done really well the last four years. I might need a late Teton jersey there. That's uh, that that was actually pretty sweet there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's got uh, the late Teton, a, a nice fancy script across the front. Obviously, our OT on on the side, uh, and then the other sleeve we have the uh, the Franco Ontarian flag, so the green and white with the the fleur de lis and, and Ontario trillium. So uh, it was very well done. Now you're raising the point, obviously, you know, being in Canada. In the Frontier League, there are Canadian teams and there are uh, teams in the United States. I'm curious, is there a rivalry with the other Canadian teams or is it uh, more, you know, you prop each other up and you root for them if you don't win? Yeah, I mean, we've uh, two of our three years that we've actually played, uh, we've been knocked out of the a one a win shy of the of the championship series by Quebec, uh, who have mm-hmm. who ultimately won three, uh, three consecutive titles. The first time in league history that a team has won uh, three uh, Frontier League uh, championships in a row. Uh, Trois Rivieres has been a team that's always been chasing us and they've always given us really the, the hardest time. Uh, obviously, so those two teams obviously stand out. Uh, but even uh, geographically, our rivals have, have really become Tri-City and a lot of that uh, dates with history of uh, their previous manager and our manager. So a lot of that is, uh, had taken form previously, but th- tempers really cooled off, uh, I would say, in 2024 when they made a, a managerial change. So that uh, they're our closest United uh, U.S. opponent. Uh, so those uh, the two Canadian teams, and obviously, I would say Tri City, who we actually knocked out in the playoffs this past season, uh, have uh, have emerged as our uh, as our as our main rivals, in large part because of geographical reasons. All right, so Davide, before I let you go, uh, there was something you told me about the uniform when we were speaking off air. 
that I really liked that I'd like to hear more about now that we're on air. Uh, what was that you were telling me? Yeah, we, uh, with our branding and, and our long uh, history in professional baseball as a city, uh, the, the love of the Montreal Expos never goes away. So uh, with our, with us being uh, within a couple hours of, of the, the great city of Montreal and what their history was in professional baseball, obviously when this ballpark was opened, uh, it was uh, the affiliate for Montreal for over, over 10 seasons, they won an international league championship and whatnot. So uh, our, our tribute to them was uh, a little hidden kind of note was we uh, did the pinstripes in honor of them. Obviously later in their, in their time in Montreal, they, they established the pinstripes and the links actually uh, the, the triple a team had pinstripes in their first year. And hence Cappy has some pinstripes uh, in the logo. So uh, we did it as a tribute to them. Uh, we did a, our own little twist of fun with the, with the two red sleeves and, Obviously, the, the Canadian Maple Leaf is on the left left sleeve, like Cappy's, a little uh, detail like that. So, um, yeah, the, the uniform was pretty an e uh, pretty well an easy decision of what to go with when we saw Cappy. Uh, we unveiled Cappy with the pinstripes and what our, our history was uh, in baseball, not only ties uh, with how well over the links went early in their tenure and, and how well the, the Expos were for their 35 years um, in Montreal, the, the set what was the road uniform uh, being completely black? Unfortunately, I do not have one up in my office here, but uh, with just audible written in red across the front was uh, very simple and very sweet. Actually uh, was what, probably one of my more favorite uniforms. Uh, and then as you can see with the cap, I've got on last year in our team store, we unveiled the, uh, the pinwheel. So Absolutely. it's uh, the tri very solid. It's, it's, it's a very well done. Oh yeah. yes, that's for sure. It went over very well. It's, it's been on, it's been in here ever since day one. So, uh, that we unveiled it so it's it was very well done and uh, maybe one day it makes its way onto the field we don't know well it's i you know i commented that it was a you know it's a really attractive uniform set and uh when you turned your head to look at the uniform on the wall back there i noticed that you were wearing the tritone hat there so that that's very cool it is very much like the expos cap that i own uh, I actually tried to move to Montreal in 2001, and it, uh, it didn't didn't work out for various reasons. But I was there for a couple of months and and got to see the Expos play in Stade Olympique. What a what a sad loss for baseball. Who knows? Maybe you know if they expand, uh, maybe maybe we'll see them back there in a downtown stadium as they deserve to be. Maybe, maybe hope hope to see that someday. My fingers are crossed. Unfortunately, I was I was too young to uh, to ever remember what they were like. But uh, I wish that one day we can rewrite or continue to write that history. Davide, this has been a lot of fun. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me about this, uh, this really fun brand. Where can people follow you online and uh, maybe hear your broadcasts during the season and where can people find the team? Yeah. Our, uh, first off, my personal Twitter handle is at DiDiscipio8. Uh, and obviously our broadcast can be found uh, through our website at ottawatitans.com slash broadcasts. Uh, our main flagship station in Ottawa is uh, from my alma mater at Algonquin College at CKDJ uh, FM. Uh, and obviously our teams can be found on Twitter and Instagram at Ottawa underscore Titans, uh, Facebook Ottawa Titans, uh, and our uh, website at OttawaTitans.com. Davide, thank you so much. This has uh, been a lot of fun. Good luck with the off season, and good luck next season with the Titans. Yes, uh, I don't know. I our, This will date. Uh, go out probably a little later, but as we speak, our schedule went out yesterday, so my calendar is already flipped to 2025. So I know uh, New Year's Eve is a couple of months away still, but uh, I'm focused on 2025. We're ready to go here uh, at the ballpark. So thanks for having me, and uh, hope to catch up soon. All right, everyone, welcome back. I am so pleased to have on the podcast for the very first time designer Alexander Fish of Ottawa, Canada who created the brand for the Ottawa Titans. Alexander, how are you doing? Oh, pretty good. Thanks for having me. Before we get started here, you are wearing an awesome teal Portland Sea Dogs cap. So uh, you, this is a, a classic brand and not even the current one, the old teal one from their Marlins days. You're oh, yeah. obviously a, a big fan of, of minor league baseball and, and the logos and the caps. Um, oh, yeah. Much How to my you... wife's chagrin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see the shelf behind you there. Now I see it. The, yeah. the familiar minor league baseball shelf. This is uh, this this Ottawa Titans logo is is really fun. And it's a little bit different from a lot of the logos you see in the minor league baseball landscape because it's not created by one of the big firms. It's uh, you know, it's a it's a pretty unique sort of visual aesthetic with this very cool, gigantic character holding a gigantic bat over the the cityscape of Ottawa. 
Can you tell me uh, just in general, how did you get involved in creating the the branding for the Ottawa Titans? Okay. Well, basically, so um, they, they had the, the name, the team contest uh, when they first acquired the team. And I'd been coming up with name ideas for months before that. And just every name idea I'd come up with, I'd draw a little, you know, what would my logo be for that? I think the main one I was pushing at the time was Ottawa Owls. Uh, Cause uh, owls, a group of owls is called the parliament. The Parliament's like our big uh, landmark here, but I had like, a, a, a several other ones as well. But every time I'd send them in, I'd send the logos accompanying and to the email they'd email me back and they'd say, these are great. But one thing to consider for Ottawa is we want everything to be bilingual because a, mm-hmm. a, a big, like Ottawa is pretty, we've got a fair amount of French fans and also the, the French fans love baseball. I think, especially proportionally the English fans. So you really got to cater them as well. So they wanted a name that was the same in English and French. So they, they just said, these are great, but we need something bilingual. So when the name the team contest closed, I just emailed them and I said, hi, I'm an animator from Ottawa, uh, big baseball fan. Uh, I'd love a shot at designing your logo. I like designing logos. And, you know, they were familiar with what I would do since I'd send them a fair amount of stuff. But I just had a call with uh, Regan Cates, who's one of the owners. And they said, yeah, we'll give you a shot, you know, and if we like what you do, we'll we'll go with it. And if if we don't, you know, there's no, no commitment. So from there, we uh, kind of did a back and the forth, uh, going through like a bit of a process. I think initially, my, like, because they told me Titans, and I was kind of surprised because I hadn't heard that name pop up in any of the uh, the suggestions online. I was expecting it would be one of them that I had heard out there. Uh, so I, I I initially went very hard on the Greek angle mm. for the Greek Greek Titans. Uh, I had like this one that I, or a bunch that I did where it was like a baseball wearing like a, a helmet, uh, like a Titans, like a, a Greek mythology type helmet. But I think they they said that they didn't want it to be a very close to the uh, the Ottawa Senators, the hockey team. Mm-hmm. And then there was a few other angles I went. Uh, I had one where there was like a big Titan character, uh, not not similar to the one I have now, very different. But I had him swinging the Peace Tower like a bat. And uh, they're like, we don't want to think the Titans here to destroy the town. So, they, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I had a few different characters I, I went through. Um, one of my favorites that kind of, they again, they felt it was too close to the Greek was I had kind of a, a Cyclops that was like a, you know, like a Mr. Met, Mr. Red Legs, like baseball headed Cyclops. And the O on his face would be, or the I on his face would be kind of an O. Uh, so like different process like that. But then uh, they kind of said, okay, we discussed, we don't want this. We don't want this. We don't want this. Uh, and they kind of gave me a things like that. I should, they said they definitely wanted the character, the the mascot, whatever the mascot would be incorporated in the main logo. Oh, I should say at this point, I'd kind of decided uh, that maybe the, the letter mark, the OT might be more fitting for the cap itself. Mm. And I think uh, like the ought, like the OT also makes a kind of an ought sound. Yes. <laughs> um, and I'd, I'd kind of uh, leaned. I always kind of like that, like spiky font, like the, yeah. the Giants Pirates type font. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And also I found that uh, in the history of Ottawa baseball, we've had, you know, m- a few different iterations of teams. Yeah. But the first one we had back in, I think, the, the uh, 40s or 50s was the Ottawa Giants. It was like mm-hmm. a New York Giants uh, uh, farm team. Yeah. So I kind of wanted to. And since Titans is kind of similar to Giants, I figured that would be fitting for the font. So I kind of went with that route uh, for the font. So I had that. And then I was kind of thinking, okay, well, this will be like, you know, the main logo slash the shoulder patch. And I was thinking like, well, I got to show a few things in it. I got to show it's like a Titan. How do I show it? A, what's an Ottawa Titan in mm-hmm. particular? Mm-hmm. Uh, what, uh, what, what's a, uh, and how do I show that in the patch? But also pay tribute to some of like my, my favorites. And one of my favorites is the Minnesota Twins with the uh, Minnie and Paul shaking hands over the river. Yeah. And then I also really liked, I always liked the the skyline on the Mets, you know? Yeah. And I really wanted a chance to, to kind of caricature the Ottawa skyline. So I thought if I put the Titan behind the skyline all big, it shows that he is of Titanic proportions mm-hmm. while also showing, you know, he's in Ottawa. And then also kind of the word mark of Ottawa on his chest can double as you know, Ottawa within the logo. 
So is that word mark that he's wearing? So he's wearing the 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 Titan character, this big red Titan character who has a name, right? Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. They they named him Cabby. I didn't end up naming him, but okay. uh, I, I had a different name in mind. But uh, they went with that one, and I think it works a little better. So, and with the cap and everything covering his eyes, it kind of fits. So, absolutely. He, so he's he's wearing a jersey that has the Ottawa letter mark on it, and then he's got the the interlocking OT on his cap. Is that the actual? Is, does that actually re- reflect the uniform set that the team wears? Uh, they went with something a little different, but I like it a lot. Like the cap has the OT, uh, but the sleeve they have they they stuck with the pinstripes like I have, but they have mm-hmm. red pinstripes. But they gave him uh, uh, red sleeves. Uh, they the, the players red sleeves, which I almost think it's like the the Titans red arms. You know? Yeah. The skyline that you reflect here is is quite detailed. Obviously, in this digital age, it's a little bit different than it used to be in terms of having to worry so much about embroidery and that sort of thing. But the you know the you've got the 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 maple leaf on uh, one of his arms, and then you've got a you know quite detailed uh, cityscape here. With all that detail there, how much do you worry about like the sort of technical concerns of uh, you know uh, of embroidery or reproduction, digital print, that sort of thing? I mean, I was looking at uh, like other things similar and just kind of keeping in mind, like, do I think, you know, because I was definitely envisioning that one as like an embroidered patch. Right. You know, very much so. Uh, and like, I think like one thing is I was really, I knew it was already get starting to get like bordering on busy. So I wanted uh-huh. to keep it because uh, I definitely simplified the uh, the cityscape from from what I originally had, like a lot of like, the little details. Where I'm like, well, you know, you can still recognize that this is this building. This is that building without all the little notches and the, the the siding and stuff so can you identify what some of the the landmarks are here in the uh, in the landscape itself well, yeah so going uh, i guess we'll start on uh, the uh, the left side you've got the national gallery of canada right immediately next to that you have uh there's a church i don't really actually know the name of the church but it's kind of it's like one of the bigger it's got the two steeples between that is the uh the chateau laurier and then you get to the uh, the Peace Tower, like the, the, the uh, Parliament buildings, which we all know. And then right at that, it's more just kind of just buildings that aren't necessarily like it's they're just the more unique shapes within the skyline. Like there's one that's I believe is a hotel that has like the round kind of cylinder on the top. So to the right of it, it's more just uh, buildings that I picked out because I, I actually I bike around. The, by the area and I'm all often across the river and actually I like, just went, went and sat across the river and kind of looked at what uh, what stood out to me so I imagine that that's the sort of thing you know a, a, a cityscapes are so unique and identifiable and that's the sort of thing that gives uh, some you know, local pride here this is a team that was founded in 2020 but then didn't get to play until 2022 because of uh, COVID and the restrictions of crossing the border there has been a certain amount of baseball history in Ottawa. And so there must have been the challenge of, okay, how do we make this team Ottawa's team after the history that they've had? Obviously for me as a Philadelphia Phillies fan, we have, uh, you know, the Ottawa Lynx moved mm-hmm. to become the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs. So with the Lynx, the stadium, the Titans play in is the, the stadium is the Lynx played in. Okay. So, so we had the Lynx up until 2007. Okay. Uh, the Lynx had been, like, you know, the first few years of the Lynx, they were selling at every game. It was pretty exciting. You know, I think they opened right on the heels of the Blue Jays winning their second World Series, and they were the Expos affiliate. So people were pretty excited. Uh, then the Expos, uh, they dropped the Expos as their affiliate because it was kind of clear the Expos weren't long for this world, uh, which hurt the Lynx a lot. And oddly, they ended up kind of folding the same year mm. uh, so they they left in 2007 and then uh, i believe the next team was the uh, uh ottawa rapids uh i think they were only around for one year and that's the one year i didn't live in ottawa it's actually the only ottawa team had i don't have uh, listeners of this podcast would be upset with me if i did not point out that it's the ottawa rapids with a z Oh uh, yeah, I have that was right for around bilingual the... reasons. <laughs> Is that because of bilingual? Okay, because oh, yeah. <laughs> we have the Northern Colorado Owls with a Z, and I always point out that they are the Owls with a Z. What is the? Why does the Z help with with bilingual reasons? 
So Rapids in English is spelled R-A-P-I-D-S and Rapids in French is R-A-P-I-D-E-S. Yes. So, but if you put a Z, I guess it, they decided it could fit for both. Okay. So, well, so we'll call them the Rapids with a Z uh, because yeah. it is Canada. I, I do want to honor that uh, pronunciation mm-hmm. there. So the Ottawa Rapids with a Z were around for one year. Okay. So, uh, so then, then after that, I'm sorry, I, I inter I interjected. That's quite all right. You could continue there. So then, then uh, we, uh, we followed that up with uh, one of my favorite identities. It was the semi-pro inter-county baseball league, Ottawa fat cats. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they were around for, I'm going to say four years, but it was, it was a lot of fun. Those games, uh, they only played on weekends and half the team was local guys. So those were good times, the fat cats, but the fat cats were really only here to show that Ottawa had an appetite for baseball because they're so far from the rest of the IBL, right? The rest of the IBL is over in, uh, Southern Ontario. Once the fat cats folded up, they, then we had the Ottawa champions, who were playing in the uh, the Can Am League? Uh, they were called the Champions because the group that was trying to bring Ottawa back to baseball had called themselves the Ottawa Champions, and it was a bit of the. I think they in the five years they existed, they won the championship once, and it okay. was the only time they had a winning record. <laughs> it's <laughs> so. like the uh, not too far down the road from you, you have the Vermont Lake Monsters. Who oh, yeah. they have Champ, the Lake Monster, and they were going to be the Vermont Champs but they hadn't won a championship in like their whole franchise's history. So they thought they couldn't be the Vermont champs. So they just, yeah. they kept the mascot name, but then went with the Lake monsters. I think they um, made the right choice. <laughs> I think they did too. It's a great name, right? Like that's a really fun one. So when this, uh, you know, when this was, was unveiled, it is quite different from, you know, the aesthetic that you see in some other minor league teams out there in the world. What was the reaction locally to this, to this brand? Uh, I'd say it was like mostly positive, but like definitely mixed. There was definitely okay. a few people that uh, did not like it. Uh, I remember some people saying like, oh, I did like a six-year-old draw this kind of thing. And I was like, oh, but I was, you know, every time I was, I'd just go look at it and be like, well, I'm very proud of this. So, <laughs> I don't, but then the thing that was nice was, uh, well, I think there was two things. I feel like a lot of the people that didn't like the logo with Cappy really liked the, the letter mark. Yeah. So at least there was that. So I was like, well, it gave a little something for everybody. But then also a lot of the people that that really didn't like it, uh, you know, like they don't know who I am online. So like, well, what you would have done? And they, when they show me what they would have done, I'm like, oh, well, I would have, I would have really hated that. So you know, <laughs> a lot of a lot of like jagged T swords, you know, like yeah. swords that make T's and things like that. So yeah. I was kind of like, well, I'm, I'm, it made it made me like doubly happy that I that I got to do this, you know. Yeah. If you release a minor league baseball logo that gets zero negative reaction, you've done something wrong, right? Like all that means is that you just haven't gotten anyone's attention because, uh, you know, there's, there's been brands released by, you know, the highest end firms recently. And people are like, that's amateurish. <laughs> it's like, guess yeah. what? I don't think you're going to do any better. So absolutely. You know, it's uh, I think a mixed reaction is to be expected anytime you release a new brand and the, the the only thing other than a mixed reaction that you might get is no reaction, and that's far worse. Yeah. Well, I mean, even when you had Guy Gilchrist on, and he was saying that there's some bad reaction to this, it's like, oh, okay. That, that kind of <laughs> made me feel even, you know. <laughs> yep, yep. No, it's uh, keyboard warriors out there. So, Alexander, before I let you go here, I do want to ask about this this character. He's got his sort of eyes covered with the baseball cap, and he's got this big nose, and he's got these two – you know, these two teeth sort of sticking up out of his lower lip and he's great big, you know, Mark McGuire arms here. So he's, he's big and bulky. Uh, he doesn't, he doesn't look like maybe he graduated in the top 10% of his class. I don't mean to, you know, cast aspersions here or, or make assumptions, uh, but he is a, you know, he's got sort of a brutish look about him. Uh, can you tell me about the, the development of that character? Oh yeah. So I kind of reached a point where, you know, they said, you know, no Greek stuff, no things like that. And I was kind of like, well, how do I, you know, uh, show that this character is a Titan. And I'd had a few other ideas. I figured like, what if like there was like a Godzilla type character because he could be like a Titan, but they didn't love that. So then I just said, well, I'll put him in a baseball uniform. So it's like his identity is that he's, you know, a baseball, you know, just big baseball guy. Uh, it was Regan's idea to put the leaf on his, his arm. But I made him red just because I felt like that would be better than making him white or black within the color scheme because the Ottawa colors tend to be red, white, and black. Okay. Uh, and then I wanted kind of like 
if he's going to be a Titan, kind of make him his identity is a Titan. So kind of the baseball cap covering his eyes kind of just kind of lack takes his whole identity is being the baseball player. Like the uniform is almost his identity. Mm-hmm. I was kind of thinking like the old, you know, the old Bugs Bunny cartoons, the abominable snowman. Yes. Yeah. I, I was very, very inspired by that. <laughs> so I like, it. Uh, and as for the teeth, that was kind of just like a, a design choice that I made that I kind of, it's when I draw like my an animator and I draw a lot of characters on the side and that's kind of something I was half expecting them to say, you know, file those down. Uh, yeah. So I kind of went with that. Uh, when they unveiled it on the day, I remember on the local sports radio, they're saying, Oh, I could use some dental work. So, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, I just kind of, yeah, went with that. And yeah, the character, he, he fit in the logo. He's big and burly and uh, the kids love him. So <laughs> absolutely. How could you not Cappy? And then he's, you know, he's obviously red is going to be a connection. You know, Ottawa is Canada's capital city. And and so uh, you've got the maple leaf there. Is that something that the team asked for to have the maple leaf? I know that that's a prominent feature in a lot of, uh, you know, Canadian sports teams. Uh, or was that your decision to incorporate that? No, that was that was their decision. But once I did it, I feel like it kind of put, you know, gave him that just little something that he needed. But I yeah. think, you know, when you're within like the demo, different demographics that are, you know, Canadian sports fans, I feel like there's always that demographic of, you know, very patriotic type people that you kind of got to bring along. So I think like it's it's important to some fans. So I think yeah. it's important to, you know, bring so that he has a little something for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. It's I, I do have one more question for you. And we're going to get deep into some some typographic nerdery here. How much time did you spend on the letter spacing in the word Ottawa? And I ask that just because you this is one of the hardest words I can imagine to letter space because the, the AWA They've got those perfect slants lining up. They just tuck in all nice and neat together. And then having two capital T's next to each other, I don't care how how hard you try. It's it's so hard to to letter space appropriately two capital T's letter t, uh, you know next to each other. How much time did you spend on that letter spacing? Uh, a lot, actually. It's kind of <laughs> I, it's funny you ask that because I'm suddenly getting I'm back at my computer sitting there like no yeah you know, it, was, it just was a lot of a lot of trial and error to kind of get yeah. that right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Letter spacing is is not at all an exact science. And it's one of those things where you can sit there and play with it and you do all, uh, you know, des- different designers have different tricks for it and you play with it and you play with it and you finally got it. And then you come back to it and you're like, nope, got to start over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's- well, it's just where the one A tucks into the T really throws you off because you oh, got yeah. so much real space under those two double T's together. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Like it's, and, and you used the, uh, the parliament building sort of tucks up there between it's funny because in the original uh version i sent them i had the the parliament building centered uh and the the, you know uh, regan was loving it and everybody i was dealing with was loving it but i guess they had like a meeting about it and someone said maybe we should off center the parliament building so it doesn't look like phallic (laughs) in relation to his uh you know (laughs) you know someone would have pointed it out right you know someone would have would have come up with that at some point so yeah so the the parliament building shifting to where it is was done after the fact (laughs) well one of my favorite things about this story is is just that you were persistent about just sending designs to the team and i think that that's a really interesting lesson for if there are any aspiring designers out there uh, you know listening to this podcast uh you know and i hope that there are be persistent and and keep creating and keep sending things out there into the world and and you never know what's going to happen. So I think that's that that part of the story I absolutely love and it's a really fun brand. Alexander, thank you so much. This has been a ton of fun. Where can people find the work that you do online? Uh, well, my personal stuff is mostly on Instagram. Uh, it's at Dangerfish. Fish spelt like my last name with a Y. Fantastic. All right, thanks, Alexander. Appreciate it. All right, thanks, Paul. All right, everyone, welcome back. I am so pleased to welcome back to the podcast, Dan Simon of Studio Simon, who every single week for like 80 something weeks now, we're you know we're coming up on, we're not that far from 100, I don't think, probably more than 80 something, might even be 90 something now, brings us a Studio Simon Stumper trivia question. Dan Simon, good morning. Hello, how are you? Uh, I am fantastic, Paul. Thank you for asking. Let's be specific. We are on stumper number 91. 
91. And this episode is dropping on November 5th, 2024, which is election day. And we are going north of the border to the Ottawa Titans. Uh, we haven't done too many Canadian teams on this podcast. We uh, obviously the Vancouver Canadians. We did the Welland Jackfish. Well, there used to be more Canadian teams in baseball, uh, major league and minor league. Of course, there are no longer the Montreal Expos. And there used to be a, a, a decent handful of minor league teams in Canada. And now they're fewer and farther between. I have a stumper for you, Dan. Can you guess? This would just be a straight up guess. What was the first Canadian baseball team that I saw play at home? I'll give you a hint. It was on the eastern half of the country. I'm guessing the Expos. The Expos were the second Canadian team that I ever saw. The first was in Quebec, the Quebec Capital. Who still exist. Who still exist. They're still around. They were in the Can-Am League back then. And they're now in the Frontier League. Yeah. So that was that. It was a, an adorable little ballpark, and that was back in 2001 that I saw them play. Wow! So they've lasted that long. That's pretty yeah impressive. Yeah. Good for them. And then it was later that summer that I saw the Montreal Expos. Off the top of my head, I can think of two Hall of Famers, Major League Baseball Hall of Famers from Canada. Can you name any? Um, I guess we're not counting Joey Votto yet. He'll probably, I am I predict he will be a Hall of Famer, but yes, we're not counting him. No, I guess I can't name any other, uh, I can't name any Canadian Hall of Famers. Okay, you've got Larry Walker. Okay, oh right, of course. And Ferguson Jenkins. Ah, I didn't know, I didn't know he was uh, Canadian. So we're talking about Canada today. Now yeah. our studio Simon Stumper has nothing to do with Canada. What it does have to do with is the fact that the name of this team in Ottawa is also the name of a major league sports team, specifically the Tennessee Titans. So with that in mind, our studio Simon Stumper today asks, not counting minor league baseball teams that share the name of their major league parent club, how many affiliated minor league baseball teams have names of other big four sports teams with the big four, of course, being in addition to major league baseball, which does not factor into this question, the NFL, the NBA, and the NHL. Okay. okay. Um, and also not counting the down East wood ducks who are sort of done now. Anyway, the Akron rubber ducks, or the Sugarland Space Cowboys, because even though Ducks is the name of an NHL team, they're specifically Wood Ducks and Rubber Ducks, so they don't really share the name. And Space Cowboys is not Cowboys. So not counting those and not counting any other baseball teams like the South Bend Cubs and Iowa right, Cubs, right, right. et cetera. So just with all that, let's just reiterate the question. Yeah, How many affiliated minor league baseball teams have names of other big four sports teams. Okay. Is it A, four, okay. B, eight, Ooh. or C, 12? Four, eight, or 12 teams? Well, uh, since you asked this question, this is, and this is a fun one, this is a good one. I haven't been able to come up with too many. The best example that I can think of is the Rochester Red Wings who existed before by like two years before the Detroit Red Wings did. And so, so that's one example there, Rochester and Detroit. I'll tell you, there are not a bunch jumping immediately to mind. So my inclination is to go with the lowest number of the three that you, you offered there. I'd be surprised. I'd be shocked if it were 12, I'd be surprised if it were eight. I'm going to go with four. Okay, Paul Caputo, prepare to be shocked. Oh boy, here we go. Are there really 12? There are 12, and here we go. Let's let's go through them. You've got, now, even though I said we're not counting 
minor league baseball teams, you, you do have the Palm Beach and Springfield Cardinals, who you've got the Arizona Cardinals. So okay, that, that okay. That's most, a sneaky most, one. Okay. Half of the 12 are, are NFL teams. So okay. you've got those two teams, Palm Beach and Springfield Cardinals. The Peoria Chiefs. Oh, yeah, of course. The San Jose Giants. Yeah. The Somerset Patriots. Oh, the pay! I should have thought of the Patriots. Yeah, absolutely. Because we just did an episode on them, and we had okay. this conversation. The Saint Paul Saints. Yeah. Okay, so there's the six NFL teams. You also have three NBA teams. You've got the Durham Bulls. Yeah. Fresno Grizzlies, Myrtle Beach Pelicans. Okay, for those who don't know, Chicago Bulls, Memphis Grizzlies, New Orleans Pelicans, and in the NHL, you also have three. Now, with a little bit of a disclaimer, you've got the Vancouver Canadians. Now, you, of course, have the Montreal Canadiens, yeah. but I think that's just the French spelling of Canadians. As a I'll French give it to partner, you. I'll allow it. There? Okay. The aforementioned Rochester Red Wings yeah. and the Harrisburg Senators. Of course. Dan, this was a great question. This was a really fun one. It's funny. I'm sitting there, you know, trying to think of examples and and none were coming to mind. And then every single one you named, I was like, oh, of course. But well, uh, it would have it would have taken me a while to come up with all those. As it would have me if I didn't have the, the <laughs> list in front of me to go over. But check this out. Yeah. There actually would have been 14. Mm -hmm. But for the Boise Hawks and Ogden Raptors having been contracted by Major League Baseball in 2020 and now playing in the formerly affiliated but now independent Pioneer League. So yeah. if not for that, there would have been 14. Now, given that the Ottawa Titans are an independent minor league team, mm. I was thinking, should we do this instead of affiliated teams? Uh, let's do independent teams. But I was thinking, well, in general, we're more familiar with the affiliated teams. So I, I, I spe specified it would only be affiliated. But there were also 11 um, independent minor league teams that share names with big four sports teams, with two of them being in French. Um, now, we won't go through all 11 or, or, unless you want to. I do. I want to hear all 11. Okay. Well, let, let, let's go through these. You've got... Four NFL teams, four NBA teams, and three NHL teams. So in the NFL, in French, you have the – and you you can help me with the pron pronunciation here – the Trois-Rivières-Aigles, which uh -huh. is the Three Rivers Eagles. The Trois-Rivières-Aigles. Aigles. Okay. <laughs> Aigles. Um, you have – okay, they play in the Frontier League. Okay, go Birds. The Pecos Bills yeah. um, in the Pecos League, the Alpine Cowboys also in the Pecos League, and the featured team in the uh, in this episode, the Ottawa Titans of the Frontier League. So there were the there were four NFL teams, the four NBA teams. You have the Gateway Grizzlies in the Frontier League, the aforementioned Boise Hawks and Ogden Raptors in the Pioneer League and the Portland Mavericks in the Mavericks Independent Baseball League. Are you yeah. familiar with that league? Yes. Yeah. And that is one that is somewhat controversial because that team, I believe, is is owned by the Salem Kaiser Volcanoes and they are not really affiliated with anything to do with the original team. And uh, I know that uh, uh, Rob Nelson uh, of Big League Chew, and who was a pitcher for that team, uh, dis disapproves of the current iteration of the, the Portland Mavericks. If I'm not mistaken, he was a guest on Anna's Baseball Bucket List podcast. Do you, do you recall that? I recall that. And I recall that he was a guest on this very Baseball by Design podcast. A very good interview. And so he sent me a giant box of Big League Chew. Like nice. he sent me like a hundred and some packets of big league chew that I <laughs> put in the mail to a bunch of different people. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay. So, and last stumper, we talked about um, Jim Bouton, who was his partner in that venture. That's right. Um, okay. So we also got a pitcher on the Portland Mavericks. Yes. Yeah. Um, and the actor. Um, Kurt Russell. 
Kurt Russell, whose yeah. father owned the team and Big Kurt Russell. Russell played on the team. He was actually a decent ball player. Yeah. Um, so um, got three more teams, yeah. NHL names, the Long Island Ducks in the Atlantic League, the, again, to use the word aforementioned, Quebec Capitals mm -hmm. um, in the Frontier League. The, you've, of course, got the uh, Washington Capitals. Yep. And lastly, the Salem Senators, also of the Mavericks Independent Baseball League. I like this very much. This was a, this was a really fun question. I, I kind of want to go back and like encourage everyone to pause the recording and think about this one a little bit before we get right into the answer, because it was, uh, it, that, that was a fun brain teaser. And, and, you know, you could, you could sit there, you could sit there for a long time trying to come up with these and, and not get all of them. So that was, that is, that is definitely, definitely a fun, a fun stumper, even though I got it wrong, you know, I, I'm more, I'm more concerned about having fun than I am about getting the question right. So this was, this was a fun one and I appreciate all the work that you put into this one. Well, with regard to what you just said, when there were questions, like, for instance, I just um, I saw something about a question in, in either a news article or something on social media. Who are the major league teams that have not won a World Series? Yeah. Now, I was able to answer that in my head by just going through in my head who all the major league teams are, because there's only 30 major league teams, right. even with contraction, there are still 120 affiliated minor league teams and trying to go through all of those in your head. Good luck to even the, the <laughs> biggest of minor league baseball fans. Yeah, uh, indeed. I don't think I, I, I don't think I could have in my head come up with half of the 12 affiliated teams that share names with big four sports teams. I, I, I don't think I would be able to. I was only able to do it by looking at a list of these teams and going through and seeing who had names that would work for this question. The, uh, the Achilles heel for me on this one would have been the NHL names. I just like I have not been I have not been an avid follower of the NHL in a long time. And and there are still sometimes people will mention teams like the Columbus Blue Jackets. And I'm like, is that a real team that actually exists in professional sports <laughs> like that's that, you know. So that that would have been my Achilles heel if I had been, you know, sat down and given 24 hours to come up with these. For whatever reason, the fact that the Rochester Red Wings existed before the Detroit Red Wings did has always stuck in my head. I've always enjoyed that. So, Dan, as always, thank you so much. This has been a ton of fun. It's always great to spend a little time with you. This is a Friday morning, so great to spend some time with you on a Friday morning. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you next week. Well, I'm glad you had fun with this one and looking forward to having more fun with you next week. See you then.